I'd just like to introduce everyone that's here from our eSports. Uh, you guys have been hearing a lot about eSports the past few months. Uh, we've been having some informal gatherings at the high school and we've had anywhere from 35 to 60 plus students there for the different tournaments we've been having uh, to try to grow, grow the program, get word out about it. This is Mr. Klebanski, he's one of our new teachers this year. Uh, he teaches math, uh, he's helping lead the initiative. We have Miss Molly Nury, a new school counselor this year who's also helping lead the initiative. Mr. Michael Seahurst, one of our special education teachers. And then we have Bodie Dagan, he must have pulled the short straw. He's here representing <laughs> the students. Um, so we have a lot of facts, a lot of details we wanna share uh, with you about this program. We're really excited though, and I know also on the agenda tonight, if with your approval, would be a grant from Range Resources of $5,000 to help us get this program started as well. So I'm gonna turn it over uh, to Mr. Seahurst, or Mr. Seahurst, Ms. Nuri, and Mr. Klebanski, and I know Bodie is gonna be talking real quick, so. Well, hi everybody. Uh, yeah, just kind of giving you kind of the overview of what we've been working on and esports at CM. Super exciting stuff. I mean, we started up what, back in February, March, talking about it and getting some kid interest. Uh, I'm not going to talk a whole lot of that's not my thing, but uh, I've been helping out with it and just excited. I'm, I was going to actually let Bodie take over for a little bit because he's, right. he's our student, one of our big student leaders. He's been up there organizing tournaments helping get things, he put a lot of work into this too, so I'm going to turn it over to Bodie. All right, you be in charge of it. Hi everyone, my name is Bodie Dagan, and as he said, like, I'm the, uh, like, I've been helping out a lot with the eSports, um, so we're just going to give you some information about it, and some, some facts. Slide. So what is eSports? So, eSports is obviously just, um, a, well, Canada Max specific, it's a league where we're going to have, we're going to have people from all across the school, anyone that wants to join and we would play any kind of games we've stuck to mostly like school appropriate like because we don't want any we we haven't set the initiative to any like violent games i would say yet but we've just been focusing on some like it's going to stay a school appropriate yes always yes we're going to keep it school appropriate and um we it's just about getting people together it's an opportunity for a lot of student leadership, a lot of student coordination. Like, as you can tell, I'm right here talking, <laughs> like I would say. Um, but it's going to give a, a lot of the students an opportunity to bond with other students and some of them to coordinate uh, some of the events. Good flip the slide. So here's our mission statement. It basically sums up what I just said. Like, it's going to open the door for people to pursue careers um, and kind of gain those leadership skills that they might not be able to gain somewhere else. That's good for that slide. So here's some facts where Ms. Nuri is going to present to you guys. So, um, yeah, in case you haven't heard, the esports industry is booming in the last couple years. Um, as of today, it is over a $1 billion industry, and that includes advertisements, careers, players, scholarships, um, profit, all of it. So. In 2020, uh, something I really love is that colleges are starting to hop on board, just like us. Uh, about 200 colleges started offering scholarships for eSports, so players themselves, just like athletic players, can prove their skills, demonstrate their abilities, and then receive tuition for it. So I just think that that's really neat. The lists are growing more and more, so it's giving our kids who might not have other incentives to look forward to college after high school, another opportunity to. I have, um, I have a question about that. Are, yeah. are they providing the opportunity to the image and likeness type of money that's being provided to athletes and college? So I really think that we're still on the ground level of it from all the research I've read so far. It more so aligns with academic scholarships um, I honestly foresee it going that direction at some point because this one day could become a potential sport at our school, more competitive, and I imagine it will get there because especially all the online streaming platforms for video games right now, there's so much potential to that. It's, it's going to get to that point. I just had a conversation with the head coach at WVU. They got the number one Madden player in the world. So he's going to WVU for free to play Madden. And <laughs> you get on you get on Twitch and things yeah. like that. It's not only kids playing video games now, it's kids watching kids play video games. Mm -hmm. And the viewers from that is where the money comes from. So it, it's a huge, huge industry. And the Trinity is this year two for it. They have like 50 kids after school that hang out in there and play, and they're kids that don't do anything else. So it gives them a niche. So it's, it's, it's a wonderful program. 
It's not just playing video games. It's the third most watched sporting event in the world when they have the World Championships. There's a Super Bowl, the World Cup, and then eSports. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, something that I thought was important to note there is when I was doing some research, I found that about 90% of the scholarships for eSports are going to young men right now. So I just wanted to say that I think a part of my personal mission with this is to encourage young women also to join. Um, if, if you can attend any of our events ever, I just think it's so neat. From a counselor's perspective, we've already said it, it gives these kids a niche. I see populations of every type represented at these events. You have the kids who are athletes, you have the kids who like to do theater, you have the kids that really don't have any other reason to be invested in after school activities and they show up for it and they're all finding the common ground within the video games they didn't even know they all played together and you have girls that are showing up as well and I just think that that's so important because we've already found connections between um, between young students who play video games and STEM related careers in the future and especially young females so I think it's so important to make sure they're represented in this as well. And from, from the special ed perspective uh, already we have, a we have students from the emotional support program involved, the TES program, the learning support and we also have a student from the life skills program and participating as well. Who's your Super Smash Brothers character? Mine? Probably Pikachu. <laughs> if we're if we're getting if we're getting too specific, I mean. <laughs> um, and just going off of that really quickly, I did also find out that one of those students, Mr. Snowhorse, just mentioned the esports is the very this is his fourth year at the high school. Um, the esports is the very first uh, extracurricular activity the student has ever shown interest in. Yeah, their mom reached out to our um, life skills teacher and passed that along to me. So I really think that's just a testament to what this is all about. He, he, he asked the teacher every day yeah. on our next event. So. <laughs> yeah. And he, he did really well. In the last tournament, he made it to, it might have been the semifinals, maybe, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, you know, so it really is just a cool chance for every kid to come together. And going off of that, really, um, I just also wanted you to be aware that it's more than just playing video games. So we really are trying to open this up because it is a whole industry. And there are so many roles involved in that. So you do have kids that are playing video games. We have one student, she's, she's a young girl who, she doesn't play video games, but she's very artistic. And she's taken, uh, you'll see some of her drawings actually in some pictures later. She started to take on the artsy role of our club. She created our, she helped create our logo. She is creating different um, characters and stuff. So we have kids who are in art who are helping out. We eventually could have kids um, that could be commentating on the games, right? And that could be developing their public speaking skills if they want to go into that after high school. We have actual kids who could be more comfortable managing and coaching versus actually playing, right? And so in that sense, you're giving these kids another role. Uh, coordinating. Odie is so humble, but if we could explain to you how well he directed our last tournament, it was our craziest and largest one yet, and it was fluid and changing at all times, and he really stepped up and above and beyond. And it was, it was that last tournament was really student run. Yeah. You know, yeah. the kids, they set up the equipment, they play, they manage the, the brackets, they figure out, well, what can work best, what can go most efficiently, can we have these, how many TVs can we have playing at one time? And then they help clean it all up. So it really is a student-led and run organization, which um, we'll just ask you. Yeah. Was the tournament at the high school? It was, yeah. and yeah. we have pictures later. Yeah. 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 Keep going. Roll. Yeah. So this very quickly, I just also wanted you to get a scope of um, all of the different outcomes for students that are interested in esports, right? So I know it's very small, but essentially. You have all these different career ranges from the entertainment industry to uh, you know actual performance to media, events, organization, technology, you know, IT, video game developers, communication, sales, marketing. It just really is a serious industry now. And I think what we want to get across is that yeah, these kids are having fun, but they really are also developing opportunities for their future. Yep. And these are just a couple of pictures. So this is our interest meeting, and this is in the lower LGI room. We had, I, I did a quick head count. We had, there was 90 kids that came out for, for eSports, which I think is huge. And 
one of the bigger clubs, and just, you know, you get a big, diverse group of people. Every, everybody likes video games, not everybody, but most kids like video games in some way, shape, or form, and just that they're interested in this, I think it's really cool. Actually, the flyer was designed by one of our student leadership kids, Hayden, made that. And I think that that's awesome, too. You get, you know, tech skills built and that kind of stuff, but... I think one of the coolest things about that meeting was we had kids thanking us for organizing the meeting, thanking us for, for wanting to do eSports. It's something they've wanted to do for a while. They actually gave us a standing ovation yeah, yeah, really during awesome. their meeting, which is unheard of. So I think that speaks a lot about how valuable this would be to our student body. You just keep going. There's just some different pictures. It's just showing all the kids. Actually, this was also a student-led meeting because I really don't like to talk a lot and lead meetings. So, uh, who was up there? Layton, Hayden, Mackenzie was leading the meeting, and they talked a lot. Ken was up there too. And, but it was cool. Yeah, we had a lot of people. Uh, we did breakout sessions. The kids led the breakout sessions because there's a bunch of different games in esports. Obviously, it's not just one game. It's kind of like a track thing where you got different events. So different games. So kind of let different students run point on which game they're kind of most interested in. It was, it was cool, you keep going through some pictures here. This was, we played a little bit of games afterwards, just we set up the VRs, the kids are super into that. And it, Virtual reality. There's Grace in that picture, so <laughs> we got you in there. Uh, yeah, I, it was hype. There's a lot of kids out there, they all gather on the TVs. That top left is actually yep. me beating all those kids in Mario Kart. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I was very proud of that one building. There you go. Yeah, we got, and then, um, so we got some equipment, uh, kind of just a little, Head start, we got a few different, uh, I think we got five Nintendo Switches and some games to set up, which we've been using to sort of play our games just before we get a full thing going. But the kids set up all the consoles and everything. They're managing the equipment, which is a super cool skill. And then we had a Smash Brothers tournament. We had 29 people come out for Super Smash Brothers, which is just a game a lot of people like. It was pretty hype. We did a two-day bracket. It was fun. This was the Mario Kart tournament we just did what, uh, last Wednesday, I think, or two Wednesdays ago. But keep going to this one. There's you see, uh, it kind of coincided a little with the volleyball players, so they were all out there, and that turned into like a huge thing. It was a spectator sport. You can go ahead. We have a, yeah, it was, <laughs> keep going. We got a, I think there's a video here at the end. Can you play this? This is just listen. This was after we quieted the crowd down, because it was it was insane. You should have, you should have heard the building. And they were more concerned with winning the video game match than the section championship oh, yeah. they won later that night. So yeah, and yeah, no, 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 I, I think it's just the yeah. There's one more slide if you can get to it, but not a big deal. If not, just ideas for the future. I, I think this club's gonna grow. Uh, they're just getting started off. We haven't actually had a, we're not a club or anything yet. Just interest. People are out there. We got the kids. There's opportunities. Uh, I, I just, I'm excited for the future with esports. I, th I think it's going to be great for Canamac and for the students of Canamac. I, I think they're really going to benefit from it. And I know you see the WPIL up there. There's 26 states in the United States right now that recognize this as an official sport. Mm -hmm. So kind of going where you're going with the, the national uh, recognition, it's going to be there. It's just a matter of time before all 50 states recognize it and it becomes a, a sport uh, that's performed nationally. Uh, Trinity, when they rolled out the program, they started as a club. Now they have curriculum offerings. So we'll be working with Mrs. Laney next school year to see are there any courses we want to roll out for the following school year related to this as well. So we're excited for what the future holds with this program. Is it cool at all? <laughs> we, we, we've only had a few posters and you know, they, they come in. Yeah, it doesn't take much to recruit. Oh, you want to so. get in there? Yeah. We'll yeah. take you. We'll take yeah. you yeah. for it. Yep. So I want to thank the curriculum ladies that met last month and I shared that, shared with them and asked, can we kind of move forward? And they all nodded, sure, let's, let's try it. Maybe it's two months to go. And uh, uh, from there, we met with students and, um, and it just kind of continued to evolve. We've even gone down to visit uh, Waynesburg uh, University's um, eSports Arena, uh, state-of-the-art eSports Arena. Um, and. Uh, there is, you know, so you'll be hopefully voting uh, positively to make this uh, student activity into a real club this month, and then also to vote uh, to approve uh, the range grant that Mr. Crowley uh, wrote to Range, and we had convinced Range why it is that we'd like a little bit of seed money and uh, five thousand dollars there. Well, thank you guys. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Good job.